An entitled Karen lets her dog take a dump on my patio repeatedly, and despite the fact that I tell them again and again to cut it out, she decides to try and gaslight me and claim that this is my problem and not hers. So I reported them to management at the apartment complex, and as a result, I ended up getting her evicted. And I've never been more satisfied to watch a Karen get put in her place. Here's what happened. So I first want to start off by saying that this happened at the last apartment complex I lived in. My significant other and I were renting a ground floor unit at a very nice apartment complex. Now, I wouldn't say that it was a luxury apartment or anything like that, but our ground floor unit had a little patio off the back that led out into a really nice courtyard, and that area hosted some hammocks, a walking path, an outdoor fireplace and seating area, etc. A lot of people walk their dogs out there or let their kids play out in the grass, including us. We have a one-year-old cane corso. We got her when we had been living in the unit for about two and a half months, and she was only eight weeks old at the time. She's a really good dog, and we trained her well. We could let her out to go potty, and she'd come right back in, even if there were distractions or people or other dogs out. We did also always stand on the patio and watch her anyways, just because our pet agreement said that we couldn't leave our dog unattended. Then we would go pick up her droppings right away. Also, it was part of the pet agreement, as I'm sure it's standard at most apartment complexes. We kept a small step trash can right outside, specifically for her droppings, because we didn't want to throw them away inside and the only outside trash cans were on the other side of the building, which I agree is super dumb. It really was a small trash can, like the kind you tuck in the bathroom between the toilet and the wall. We also had our droppings bag hanging on our patio door handle for easy access, so we didn't have to hunt for them every time we needed them. This entitled Karen and her kid moved in on the ground floor of our building, which was two units down from us. This was no big deal. We ran into her one day, carrying in her groceries, and my significant other helped open the door for her. She seemed kind of like a Karen, but was polite. And her kid, who was maybe 11 years old, didn't look up from his phone. Which was kind of like, whatever, that's pretty typical of kids these days. They also had a dog. It was a little black and white fluffy thing, and it was super cute. But it was not very well trained. I don't know what kind of dog it was, but it was smaller than our already giant puppy. After about two weeks or so, we realized that there were dog droppings in the grass right off of our patio. We found out the hard way because my boyfriend stepped in it the first time. Luckily, he wasn't barefoot. They were very clearly not our dog's droppings because for one, we always picked up the droppings right after she went and secondly, they were very obviously from a small dog, not our 70 pound puppy. We'd been in the apartment about 7 to 8 months at that point and had never had an issue with this, so we figured it was the Karen's little dog. I wrote her a polite note that basically was like, hey neighbor, we noticed that some of your dog's droppings aren't being picked up and are right off of our patio. Per the pet agreement that we all have signed, we all need to be picking up our own dog's droppings each time they go. I'm sure it was an accident and you just didn't notice. So if you could make sure to do that going forward, we would really appreciate it. She wasn't home, so I slipped it under the door and went back to my apartment. A couple hours later, though, this lady is banging on my door and gets really angry with me. She insists that it couldn't have been her dog while also saying, how dare you assume that it was? I felt really bad and I apologized immediately. I said, I didn't mean to offend her and it must have been someone else. She told me to never bother her with this garbage again and then she stormed off in a huff. I was just thinking to myself, okay, whatever. Not even three days later, I was sitting on my patio with a book enjoying the cool weather when I see their little dog running out their back door and as you can probably guess, no one's with the dog and wouldn't you guess it, it comes over right to me. I said hello to the dog because I really do love dogs and then it took a dump right off of my patio. It ran back home and scratched the door to be let in. I saw her kid slide the door open just enough to let the dog in and then close it again without coming outside to pick up the droppings. I was so annoyed because here I saw it with my own two eyes that yes it was their stupid dog and no one was even watching it when it was outside. So I grabbed a bag picked up the note, wrote another less polite note about how her kid's neglecting to watch the dog and put the bag with the droppings and the note on their patio right by the door. Then I went right back to my reading. The entitled Karen was much quicker to come by this time and stomped right up to me, waving the note around like a mad lady. Then she stated that her kid was just a kid and probably just forgot to check. I said, I don't really care. Her kid was old enough to stand outside for three minutes and come pick up her dog's droppings. She said to me, well, there's no droppings bags or trash cans on this side of the building and that she didn't feel comfortable making her kid walk all the way around the building just for that. The next part is my own fault in hindsight. 
night. I suggested that she put a trash can like mine on her patio and leave their own dog droppings bags handy like we do for our own dog. She eyed our stuff, huffed some more, rolled her eyes, refused to do anything about the droppings this dog left behind, and then just walked off. Now at this point, I was super annoyed. I stalked my patio door for the next couple of days as much as I could. I was just waiting for something to happen. And sure enough, on day two in the evening, when I was about to give up, I see the puppy run outside towards my patio. I whipped out my phone, took some pictures of the dog outside, which was not allowed, as well as the dog taking a dump, and then took a picture an hour later of the dump this dog left still out there and timestamped all of it. Then I sent an email to the apartment office people, who were always pretty nice, and they responded quickly that they would give her a warning about it. And sure enough, this lady comes back again. She is mad and yells at me, screaming, You are so petty to report us to the office. We now have a $150 fine for not picking up that dump. It's also worth noting that these fines are incredibly rare. I mean, in order to find someone for their dog taking a dump, they had to have some kind of proof that it was specifically this tenant's dog and that it wasn't picked up in a timely manner. Hence why I took so many photos and I had to timestamp everything. I told her that I had tried to be nice about it with her twice before and it was her own fault at that point for not abiding by the terms of the pet agreement that, by the way, we all had to sign, which is exclusive to people with a dog. She went off about how she's a single mother and she works during the day and her precious baby can't be expected to pick up after their dog. I told her that a 10 or 11 year old kid was plenty old enough to pick up after a dog and that if they weren't responsible enough, then maybe the kid shouldn't be letting the dog out at all and she should be the one to do it. Or maybe whoever is home with them should be looking after it. She got angry. She told me that I had no idea what it's like to be a single mom, that her mom stays with them during the day and shouldn't be expected to look after her kid and her dog. And then when she said that, she just stormed off. I expected to hear more about it, but thankfully I didn't. The ironic part is, is that I am a single mom. My kid isn't my significant others, and I raised him alone for two and a half years, all before I met my significant other. So yes, I do know how hard it is. And I live a thousand miles away from my closest family, so I never even had the luxury of being able to have my mom watch my kids. Over the next couple of weeks, we didn't find any more dog droppings off of our patio, but we did notice our garbage bags were depleting, and our trash can was filling up more quickly than usual. I had my suspicions, and I wanted to test it out. We had recently bought some small security cameras for inside our apartment, and this was for completely different reasons. So I had my boyfriend set one up outside on the patio. We faced it where we could see our door and trash can, but didn't point to the rest of the courtyard or other people's units. We wanted to try and respect people's privacy. Sure enough, the same evening my boyfriend set it up, I see the kid walk onto our patio, take one of the bags, walk out of frame, and then come back to throw it in our trash can. Okay, at this point, I'm furious, but also not trying to fight this lady or her kid. So I move the bags to the inside door handle. It's a glass door, so you can still see them, but we always lock our sliding door. The next morning, I hear someone knocking on the back patio door and I go to see her kid standing there looking annoyed. I didn't open the door. I just spoke loudly enough to ask what he needed. He demanded a bag for his dog's droppings. I said to him, sorry, but these are our bags for our dog and they were not free for anyone else to use. The apartment complex provides bags and a dispenser near the trash can on the other side of the building. This stupid entitled brat started demanding a bag saying his mom told him that he could use ours while also slapping his hand against the glass a few times. I mean, was he trying to scare me? Oh yes, I'm so terrified of a 10-year-old boy. He finally screamed at me that he's telling his mother on me. I said, fine, go ahead. I'll tell her the same thing. Sure enough, a few minutes later, his mom is standing on my patio, also demanding a bag for her dog's droppings. I denied her a bag and asked her to please step off of my patio as she was making me feel unsafe and uncomfortable. She told me that I was a bratty child, despite the fact that I'm 24 years old and she demanded that I let her use my bags as I already told her that she could before. I said, no, I told you to get some for yourself and do what I did, keep them close by and put your own trash can out on your own patio, not use the bags I buy with my own money for my own dog and then fill up my tiny trash can with your dog's droppings. I pointed out she could use a plastic shopping bag if she didn't want to buy her own bags or she could just use the bags the complex provided on the other side of the building. She kept going, off on me and I finally told her if she didn't leave my patio I would call the police as now she was seriously bothering me. She acted like she
she was going to call my bluff, but then my boyfriend got home and walked up behind me to ask what was going on. And she ended up dragging her stupid kid away again, leaving the dog's droppings in the grass of my patio. So you know what I did? Once she was gone, I took another timestamp photo of the dog droppings. I downloaded the footage of my security camera of her kids stealing my bags and throwing them in my trash can and the footage from them that morning yelling at me, demanding my bags, along with me denying them access to any of that. I then emailed all of that to the apartment management. I told them that she made me feel very unsafe and uncomfortable in my own home, that she and her child felt entitled to come onto my patio and take my belongings. I also went outside, picked up her dog's droppings, looked in the trash can of my patio, and pulled out all the bags with her dog's droppings in it. I went, I opened all the bags, and I dumped the droppings straight on her patio right outside the door. On Monday, I heard back from the office lady who said she'd taken care of it. And by Friday, there was a moving truck and the lady and her kid were moving out. I'm pretty sure they were evicted or at the very least urged very strongly to move out before a formal eviction was initiated. After talking to some of my other much friendlier neighbors, it turns out we weren't the only ones who had been complaining about her. They'd only lived in the complex for maybe three months. And by that time, they had already made so many enemies. And then all of a sudden, they're just kicked out. Sometimes I think I should feel bad for playing a part and them getting evicted, but honestly, I can't bring myself to feel guilty about any of it. It is not my fault she was a lazy, entitled Karen who couldn't even be bothered to get a shopping bag to pick up her dog's dump. I never heard about the dump I dropped on her patio, but I'd like to think she stepped in them without looking and knew better than to come to me and try and yell about it. Wow, what an entitled Karen. Not only was she blatantly letting her dog take a dump on this lady's back patio, but she was also just completely in the wrong. Instead of rectifying the situation and buying her own stuff, she instead tried to start stealing from this person. Like, what an awful person and an awful parent to boot. Like, look at the way her spoiled, rotten child was acting. This little brat was smacking the back patio door, pretending like he had any authority over the bags he was blatantly stealing. Like, what an entitled jerk. Are you serious right now? But honestly, the original poster did it right. If someone's doing something like this on your property and you have evidence of it, you need to not only take pictures of it, but if you can, absolutely record it as well. This lady was nuts. She had no business treating anybody like that. But the fact that there's proof of this crazy Karen acting like this and stealing from her and doing all this weird stuff is the only reason she got evicted. Just imagine if she had covered her tracks and this went on for months at a time. The original poster very easily could have been the one that moved out instead of this Karen. So the moral of the story is record everything. Because otherwise you're going to have entitled Karen stealing your stuff as well as letting their stupid dogs take a dump on your back patio. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Am I the Jerk for kicking my girlfriend out in the middle of her capstone project for graduate school, jeopardizing the future of her degree? Here's what happened. So to start things out, I'm a 21-year-old male and I'm a twin. And we can call my brother Matthew for the sake of anonymity. Matthew is not his real name. To get ahead of some of the most commonly asked questions, yes, we are identical. We do things in sync sometimes, but I don't know if it's any more common than two people who just spend a lot of time together and adopt each other's mannerisms. I would absolutely say that the twin intuition thing is real. We have two older brothers and I love them, but I'm not as close to them as I am with Matthew. We have never been away from each other for longer than maybe three days. We don't technically live together, but we stay in the same apartment building for college and often just fall asleep in each other's places. My girlfriend and I have a long distance relationship and we've been doing this for basically our entire relationship. I'm busy with school and the music myself as well as Matthew are working on together. She lives about two hours away and is busy with her job and her graduate program. To make a long, somewhat confusing explanation short, she's staying with me for the summer, working shorter hours remotely while she fulfills an in-person grad school requirement at the university I currently attend. Most of her grad program has been online. This particular section is not. It's her capstone project and doing it during the summer basically means she's doing it in double time. So she really has to buckle down and work. And trust me, I totally get that. But still, the way she's been treating my brother isn't cool with me. She often rolls her eyes and shuts herself in our guest bedroom when she comes home and sees that he's over. We do smoke together and we do mess around on our guitars together. And this is all while we work on our music, which is something she's been fond of, but now it seems like she hates it. The final straw came last week when I got a phone call while I was out of her freaking out. She had refused to let my brother in the apartment, so he 
used the key I had given him and she just lost it. She said her boundaries weren't being respected and that I needed to kick him out. So I told her she just needs to leave. She is now furious, saying that she can't find somewhere else to stay on such short notice and I'm messing up the most important class of her life, saying I'm too codependent on my brother and that I should have never told her she could stay when I knew she needed to work and I wasn't allowing her to do so. So honestly, am I the jerk for kicking out my girlfriend, especially since she's been mistreating my brother? What should I do? Honestly, to me, I can kind of see both sides of this. On one side, it really is okay that your brother can be there. Like, there's obviously a dynamic here that your girlfriend clearly just doesn't respect in the slightest. I mean, he does have a key to your apartment, so it's not like he's a stranger at your apartment. So it's kind of surprising that your girlfriend is not only trying to make decisions for the apartment, especially when she's not even, like, talking to you about it first, which is really, really not okay in my opinion. But also, she's really mistreating your brother in a way that I really would not appreciate either. But on the other side of this, your girlfriend is going through a graduate program. First and foremost, she probably should have explained clearly that she doesn't want any distractions, and so she doesn't want your brother over there while she's working. I think if that had been properly explained, you probably could have been prepped to tell your brother to be like, hey, sorry, but you can't come over. That, in my opinion, would have been very appropriate, and it would have been completely reasonable and understandable. But instead, it seems like we went from zero to 100 really quickly, and I think that lack of communication is probably where this frustration is coming from. Instead of just outright saying, hey, don't bring your brother over, she's now freaking out and trying to kick him out, even though he has a key to the apartment. But to your girlfriend's defense, this class that she's taking is probably really difficult. It's a capstone course. This is the collective information of everything she's been studying. She needs to pass this class, otherwise she's going to be in deep trouble. So unfortunately, despite the lack of communication, despite the fact that she's trying to kick your brother out, unfortunately, I really do think she's right in this situation. She needs to have peace and quiet, and she needs to have some way of getting all this work done. That means no distractions and no guitar playing while she's working. I think that's completely reasonable, and I really do think you need to see this from her perspective. So if your brother wants to hang out, then just flip the script and say, hey, let's go to your place. I mean, your brother does have his own apartment, right? There's no reason that you and your brother can't go over to his apartment and try and get your work done as well as work on music. Because at the end of the day, your girlfriend is under a lot of stress. And while she absolutely was out of line trying to kick your brother out of the house, you are also out of line for kicking her out of the apartment in the middle of her capstone project. So if anything, I really think you need to apologize and make this right. Because her priority of trying to graduate graduate school is really important. And if you really want to do music with your brother, then take it over to his apartment. My entitled neighbor's kid is bothering me and my family constantly by literally being a nuisance right outside my house to anybody that visits us. So as a result, we're putting up a fence. And I honestly can't wait to have that fence up just to block out that stupid kid. Here's what happened. So a couple of months ago or so, we put up a private driveway do not enter sign. The 13-year-old kid next door mocked it daily, catching him on ring camera anytime he did it, as well as seeing it with my own two eyes. Then one night, the private driveway sign disappeared. Coincidentally, around the time that the kid was hanging nearby the sign, the ring camera did not pick him up moving the sign, but more than likely, it was him. I also spoke to him and his mother in the past, asking the kids to stay on their own property, but that fell on deaf ears. So the kid, anytime we would get a delivery, he's outside, saying in a really snotty tone, this is a private driveway, keep out. He's done this to utility workers, delivery people, pretty much anybody who temporarily parks in our driveway, even someone who's a guest at our house. I guess because he figures we permit delivery people and our guests to use our driveway, he must think that he can do so too. And no, I'm not going to ask him yet again to stay off my property. I just don't feel like opening that can of worms for lack of a better term. I mean, really, I spoke to both the mother and the kid themselves and the behavior still continues. We are putting up a fence between our properties and that fence cannot get installed fast enough. It feels like we've been waiting forever for the parts to arrive, much less get the installation scheduled. I really want to have the attorney send a letter, but I'm worried that the kid will mess with the survey property markers before the fence goes up. Truthfully, I'm surprised he hasn't messed with those markers already. He tried more than once moving the old ones in the backyard, so that's why we had new ones put in. Although, the flag markers are quite easy to remove. There is rebar the surveyor also pounded into the ground, but the flag markers, they are there for the fencing installer to know the property markers. I mean, really, when I spoke to the mother about it, she simply said that she'll speak to her kid, but she was like, oh, well, kids will be kids, and you know 
know what? To that, I say no. I'm sorry. That is not what a good kid does. This is what a disrespectful kid does. A kid that does not know any boundaries. So I've done everything I can do. We have security cameras in case of retaliation, but obviously security cameras don't pick up everything because I didn't pick up who actually removed the driveway sign. And truthfully, I really don't want to invest more money for more high-tech security cameras. Honestly, I just want this nightmare to end and I cannot wait for this fence to go up. That seriously sounds so annoying. I've had bad neighbors and honestly, they are so frustrating. I honestly think that any given person would just want to live their life in peace. I personally don't want to be bothered by my neighbors. I don't want them up in my business and I definitely don't want their stupid kids on my property. So honestly, I am right there with you. If I had some stupid kid who was bothering me constantly and always trying to mess with my stuff and steal my property, I would also put up a fence. I wouldn't deal with that for a second. This kid is clearly just trying to mess with you and he better count himself lucky for not getting caught on camera because you very easily could have reported him to the police and really gotten him in a lot of trouble. So hopefully this all works out for you because the way your neighbors and that stupid kid and his parents are acting is honestly so annoying and hopefully with this fence up this garbage will eventually stop. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories use the playlist at the top of the description and if you like Am I the Jerk you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.